Good evening, viewers, to local television. Uh, I'm delighted to be gathered here this evening to speak to you about the Lenten season, which begins on Ash Wednesday. I'm delighted to be joined with me t this morning with Father Eamon McCarthy, who will be speaking to you about the Sacrament of Penance today. But before he does that, I'm going to begin by speaking to you a small bit about Lent in general. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday when we trace the sign of the ashes on our forehead as a mark of repentance. We all know that uh, Lent is a period of 40 days in which we, in particular, turn ourselves back to the Lord. We, we focus on conversion in our own lives. And the three important elements to Lent are prayer, fasting and almsgiving. And I'm delighted to say that in the McCroom area, during the Lenten season, people make a very special effort to, to pray, to fast and to give alms, to do charitable works. So I'm just going to hand you over now to Father Eamon McCarthy to speak to you about the Sacrament of Penance. Very good, and it's a pleasure to be with you as well, also here once again on McCroom Local Television. You may have seen the broadcast with uh, Bishop Crean just before Christmas that uh, we aired as well. So the Lenten season, wonderful time for conversion when the ashes are put on the people's foreheads, the sign of the cross is made on the forehead and the invocation the priest would use is repent and believe the good news or turn away from sin and believe the good news. So our exercises of prayer, fasting and almsgiving are, uh, in, I suppose, ways of encouraging us to go inward and to transform ourselves. The objective is to become more like Christ ultimately, to become saints, which is why I brought my little prop along. I brought found this little book on the bookshelves here in the McCroom local library, Saints for Dummies. And it's that easy to become a saint, simply following Christ and become like little children to follow him. So it's really those dummies series, they, they've thought of everything. But just by way of encouragement, uh, during the season of Lent, certainly we're expected to make at least one confession per year as our Easter duties, as they've always been known as. Uh, I'd recommend more frequently than that if we're serious about ongoing conversion. But the purpose of confession is not to uh, sort of embark on a guilt trip, nor to overanalyze ourselves or to, I don't know, it, it, it's not a sort of psychi psychiatrist uh, setting. Rather it's uh, delivering us from evil and from temptation and helping us to overcome our weaknesses and ultimately to grow in holiness. Now that involves uh, telling our sins certainly but no more than the doctor. I'm not really interested in the content of sins more than the doctor is anyway interested uh, except for the purpose of healing in the symptoms that we might suffer from. And so it is that the priest, Father Joe and myself, there, there isn't much that we haven't heard at this stage now. There's no commandment, I'm sure, that it hasn't been broken that we haven't heard of in confession. But again, we're not taking notes. We're not taking account of these things. We're interested in the healing power mediated by Christ's suffering on the cross. And that delivers us from the chains and the bonds of sin and freedom then to become the person we're called to be, which is what becoming holy is about, becoming a saint, is growing in good habits. The other lovely analogy I always like to use, and it's appropriate this time of year too, is cultivating the garden. You see the farmers out digging the land now, ploughing up as well. And any good garden requires considerable maintenance. If you let the weeds grow, well, don't expect to have a lovely garden. But like, this, like that in the soul, we're cultivating the ground and we're confessing our sins, we're digging up the weeds to allow the flowers of virtue to grow stronger and others of good habits. And some flowers are very beautiful and they require a lot of cultivation, a lot of care. And that's true of some of the finer qualities of the virtuous life, which would be patience and charity in particular. Uh, storms can come and toss the flowers about and, you know, insects can attack or, or funguses can grow. It's the very same, It's we're living beings. And so we have to cultivate these living habits of goodness and they require constant effort. No more than a good musician has to practice and gets coaching and gets help when practicing or a sports person, the very same. So there's lots of good analogies to help us understand that this living life of grace requires no little work and effort on our part. And certainly in confession, it's a lovely setting in which we can confide 
all our difficulties and problems uh, and personal bad habits uh, with the priest get great advice as to how to begin to address them and especially get the grace of Christ to enlighten us how to take the next step forward to strengthen us in our good efforts in doing so to heal us uh, as we all need constantly uh, to bring about growth so confession is a growth sacrament and more than a beautiful garden takes time to grow a virtuous life the very same so there are my little ways of understanding the beauty and the goodness of confession and for Lent particularly to make that extra effort to come uh, likewise uh, to keep it as a regular part of your spiritual life so during Lent Father Joe was telling me that the Pope is going to introduce uh, again this year the 24 hour opportunity to come to confession which I presume here in McCroom will will make a good run at again and make it available as, as the second third week of Lent something Sunday of Lent at that time um, and then of course we have Divine Mercy Sunday which is the Sunday after Easter which is a lovely opportunity again to so there's a month in between those two opportunities that the church provides so just encouraging us to make a regular habit of confession too if you want a blooming beautiful garden for everyone to admire so there's my little sales pitch for a good act of contrition and a real strong effort to grow and to continue growing in God's love and love of others too so I'll hand you back to Father Joe. So thank you, Father Eamon. So thanks, Father Eamon, in sharing those thoughts on the beauty of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And again, I encourage people maybe to make that special effort over Lent to avail of that sacrament in your own life. Now, I'm going to speak to you generally about um, Lent, really, uh, under three headings, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. First of all, uh, prayer. In, I, people often ask me, Father can you help can you teach me or show me what's the best way to pray and i just say to them well from my own personal experience the praying of the psalms is a beautiful way to enter into prayer and during the lenten season we reflect on some most beautiful psalms one of those beautiful psalms is the miserere psalm and um, i'd encourage people maybe in their own time if they want to make a special effort to pray maybe to open, if they have a bible at home to use maybe that psalm psalm 50 to pray over that beautiful psalm over the lenten season and you'll often find that if you take a line or a word that that can often speak to you you know when you read it first it might be mind-boggling but as you enter into that psalm in a bit more in depth and even just ponder over a line or two of it you'll find that it can speak to you in your daily life and psalm 50 have mercy in me O god in your kindness and your compassion blot out my offense and you'll find that in your bible that psalm 50 so People would also, during Lent, make a special effort to go to Mass, and I would encourage people maybe to make an opportunity to attend Mass in their own local parish over the Lenten season. And in that way, as a community, we will celebrate uh, the season of Lent in a very prayerful way. No better way than attending Mass and entering into the Paschal Mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, often people, too, will make a special effort to visit the Adoration Chapel here in McCroom and again that is open 24 hours a day and is always open to people to come in and to spend a little bit of time in prayer and again we encourage people maybe to avail of that that invitation and I'm sure a lot of people I know make that effort over Lent and have and make that effort indeed throughout the whole year as well of giving one hour to the Lord in prayer. Now, in terms of fasting, you know, obviously we think of fasting as abstaining from food and drink, and people make a special effort to do that during the Lenten season as well. But we can often fast in different ways as well, maybe cutting out uh, time watching television, cutting out a bit of time from looking at our in internet, maybe fasting from, from television, internet, and, and the media world, and maybe using that bit of time maybe in terms of prayer. And then in terms of almsgiving, charitable work people too throughout the year make uh, great efforts to support needy causes here in the McCroom area they've always done it and do so, so so generously and what I would say to people is maybe avail of the opportunity to support the Trochra Linton campaign this year the Trochra Linton campaign focuses on a country ca in e called Ethiopia which is affected by climate change and uh, you will see in the Trocher box this year a picture of mallet 
a young girl of 13 who lives in the northern part of Ethiopia and her and her family have been badly affected by drought and the condition and dry conditions which affects agricultural work in that area. So uh, again we are called to support the work of Trokra in coming to the aid of people like Mallet and her family in that region and again it's to draw attention to, to climate change and the effect that climate change has in our world. As we know from the book of Genesis God has given us the world, we are stewards of creation and we are called in our way to protect the beauty of creation. So I'd encourage people maybe in their way to support the Trochra Lenten campaign this year for 2015. Uh, people often ask me too about the ashes which we place on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday. How do we arrive at the ashes? How, do, how, do, how are the ashes made? The ashes are made simply from the burning of the palm of the previous palm Sunday. And that palm is burned and we get the ashes from that palm. And the, those ashes then are traced on our forehead uh, with the sign of the cross. And the priest often uses a number of, uh, of prayers as he places the, 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 the ashes on our forehead. Remember you are dust and unto dust you shall return. That little line reminds us about our own frailty, that that we, we have come from God, we will return to God. It reminds us about our mortality. And then we often use the, the, the other phrases, repent and believe in the good news. And that really is the key, the kernel really, of what the Lenten season is about. It's about repentance. It's about turning back to God. It's about conversion in our own lives, metanoia, having that change of heart. So there are just a few thoughts, listeners, that I'm placing before you today. Uh, they're a bit disjointed. I want to apologize for that. But I'm sure, please God, you know that you will make a good effort to celebrate the Linton season through those pr- elements of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. And now I'm going to hand you back over to Father Eamon to give his final thoughts. So thanks very much, Father Joe, now for your thoughts as well. So we'll conclude by encouraging you very strongly in your uh, efforts to participate in this liturgical climax or high point to the Church's year, which is prefaced by the the season of Lent and which looks to Holy Thursday, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, which is the reason Jesus Christ came among us, to remain with us always in the Holy Eucharist, to establish his Church with the Apostles as the head, then to suffer, to die upon the cross, only to rise again to new life, giving us great hope, great meaning, direction and purpose to our lives in the light of Christ. So let me encourage you very strongly in your faith, difficult enough as it is to live nowadays, but to participate as full as you can in the liturgical activity that that lies ahead, and especially in the Easter ceremonies, because we touch in at the very core, the very heart of our the mysteries of our faith and into the divine life that Jesus Christ seeks to share with us. So may God bless you and we look forward to speaking to you again in the near future.